this video, we talk about the concept of protection functions. First, we will define the marginal productivity. Second, we will look, take a look at the ISO coin map and the rates of technical substitution. Third, we will take a look at the return to scale concept. Then finally, we will take a look at the elasticity of substitution, some simple production functions, examples, and uh, how to model the technical changes, the technical progress. First is the basic concept, the marginal productivity. So the marginal productivity means the increase in the output if we increase the number of inputs. So say this is the this is how the usual microeconomic theory model the production function. Q is the firm's output, the individual firm's output. So we add up all the Q, we will get a big Q. Okay. So big Q is the whole output, while small Q is the individual firm's output. So this is a function of K and L. K is the capital, L is the labor. Okay, so this is the most basic production function in economics. So marginal product of capital means the increase in output if I increase the number of capital by one unit. Mathematically, this is equal to partial Q, partial K, or we call this F sub K. A marginal product of labor is partial Q, partial L, or F sub L. Okay. So one characteristic is that we assume that the rung 2Q rung K square is negative. Rung 2Q rung L square is negative. So we assume a diminishing marginal productivity. So it means that if we just increase the number of in certain kind of input, the increase in output will become smaller and smaller. Okay. So another concept is called average product of labor. Okay. So this is defined as output derived by number of labor. Okay. So in your basic micro, you may be, you may be learn that you may learn that. Okay. So average output is something inverted U shape. While the marginal output is something like this, and uh, they will intersect at the maximum point of AP. So why this is the case? Okay, so this is because if you do the partial AP, partial Q, and set it equal to zero, okay, this is how you find the maximum point. Partial AP, partial Q is equal to, okay, partial Q. Time partial. So this is equal to partial Q partial L times L. Okay, so no 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 no. Okay, so this is this should be L. Okay, because we are taking a look of the marginal product of labor and average product of labor. So if you partial AP, partial L, you will get, okay, partial Q, partial L times the denominator L minus Q derived by L squared and set it equal to zero, okay. Partial Q, partial L is the marginal product of labor times labor minus Q. So this is equal to zero. Then you can see marginal product of labor is equal to Q over L, which is the average product of labor. So this is this proof why marginal product intersect the average product when the average product reach the maximum. Okay. And the intuition is that if so, if the increase in the output by increasing the number of labor, the MP is above the average. So this will pull up the average, and over this point, when the increase in labor, okay, leads to increase in output, which is smaller than the average, then will, this will push down the average, okay. So when the intersection, they are they should be the same. So these are the intuitive explanations. So next we took a look at the ISO quant map and the rates of technical substitutions. So similar to the utility maximizations, so you can draw a 2D diagram. K and L to represent the 
substitution of the output so okay you can draw a curve so this curve is called isoquant isoquant so i s o q u a n t so isoquant means the combination of k and l that can create the same amount of output okay so here maybe k1 and l1 so this combination of capital and labor can produce q naught amount of output and you can reduce some capital but increase some labor and also create the same amount of output q naught okay so isoquan is the combination of k and l that can create the same amount of output so if you give up some labor you need to add some capital if you give up some give up some capital you need to add back some labor okay next is the concept of marginal rate of technical substitutions so in the utility maximization you have the marginal rate of substitution and in the production function you also have this kind of concept called lts okay so the lts of k for of l for k is defined as the slope of the isoquant negative of dk dl okay so this is the number that to explain how many capital has cap how many capital has to be given up if you want to add one more labor to, to keep the output level constant okay so in mathematics mathematically the rts is also equal to mpl derived by mpk okay so this is because along the iso point this is a function of k while k is also a function of l okay so when l increase k will be k has to be decreased to keep the same upper level so if you do the derivatives this is equal to zero okay unchanged the output that is f k times d k d l plus f l okay i total derive differentiate with respect to l so f k is marginal product of capital times d k d l plus marginal product of labor then by moving the terms i will get the negative dk over dl is mpl derived by mpk okay so this negative term is the rts so here it shows that if you want to calculate the marginal rate of technical substitution so you just need to calculate the marginal product of labor derived by marginal product of capital then you can find the rts so next we will talk about the properties of the rts so similar to the indifference curve you have diminishing marginal rates of substitution and in production function you have the diminishing marginal rates of technical substitutions okay so it means that if the capital to labor ratio is high if you want to in so if you add some labor you can give up loss of capital to sustain the output and if you just have a few capital okay if you add more labor you can only give up a few amounts of capital so this is the intuition of diminishing marginal rates of technical substitution so how to prove it okay so you just need to do d rts dl to see whether this is negative okay we should see a negative sign so it represents that you can give up less and less capital if you have fewer and fewer capital in order to keep the same output okay so if you d rts dl this is equal to d f l derived by f k n differential with respect to l so this is equal to the denominator times f l l plus f l k d k d l so i just apply the 
normal quotient rule, okay? Then times the numerator times the differentiate with respect to the denominator. Then square of the denominator. So this dkdl is actually the negative of fl over fk. Okay, so the next step is to replace the dk dl to be negative fl fk so the same situation happened at the right hand side so by simplifying this expression and taking the common factors you will get fk squared times fl fll minus 2 fk fl F L K plus F L square F K K then divided by F K to the power 3 okay so this expression will be negative if and only if the numerator is negative because the denominator should be positive the marginal product of capital is positive value okay so if and only if the numerator is negative okay so we know that this term is negative because the second order the round 2q round l square is negative also this is negative okay in the assumption we assume diminishing marginal rate of capital diminishing marginal product of capital so if this flk is sufficiently large then we can ensure this is negative value so in particular FLK has to be greater than FK square FLL plus FL square FKK divided by 2 FK times FL. Okay, if the cross product okay, is larger than this value, then we can ensure that RTS is diminishing. Okay. So. This is the concept of DLTS. Next, we'll take a look at the concept of return to scale. So previously, we just looked at the increase in the amount of output by of one factor. Okay, we either increase capital or increase labor. So what if we increase capital and labor together? So here comes the concept of return to scale. So if we multiply the amount of labor and capital by T, and if in output is increased by t exactly okay we call this constant return to scale okay and if we multiply the input by t and the resulting output is greater than just the t times the output we call this increasing return to scale so finally if we multiply t and k and l by t and the output resulting output is less than t times q we call this decreasing return to scale so basically we will uh, in economics we usually consider the constant return to scale case because this is the most simple Okay, we use the most simple theory to explain the difficult real world phenomenon. So the simple case to be the will be the benchmark. Okay. Okay, some uh, further characteristics can be derived from this constant return to scale. First is the so if the production function is constant return to scale, we can see that they are homogeneous of degree one. So homogeneous of degree one just means that okay if we multiply k and l by t so this is equal to t raised to the power one times f k l okay so this one represents the whole degree of one and automatically if the total pro production function total product is homogeneous of degree one the marginal product 
would be homogeneous of degree zero. So if the total is degree one, the marginal will be homogeneous of degree zero. Okay. That means the marginal product of capital is equal to rank F rank K. So this is also equal to rank F T K T L rank K. And again equal to rank F which is K over L and one rank K. Okay. So second, if this is constant return to scale, the production function, you can see the marginal product is a function of K and L. So do the marginal product of labor is a function of K and L. So MPL derived by MPK, the LTS is a function of K over L, the ratio of capital to, to labor. So in utility, we say that this is homophatic. And again, in, in the production functions, this is homophatic. If the LTX is a function of K over L, we call this homophatic production function. Okay. So this means that given a ray, okay, the isoquants will have the same slope. It just depends on the ratio of K and L rather than absolute values. Okay. So if the production function is constant return to scale, we can derive a homophatic production function. And given the homophatic production function, we can explore the increasing return to scale and decreasing return to scale case. Okay. Say this is the new function we want to explore. And this is equal to FK and L. So this is this is assumed to be homophatic. And we do a monotonic transformation of gamma. Okay, gamma can be any positive value. Then capital F K L is the homophatic is the monotonic transformation of the homophatic function. Then this capital F K is equal to so, it, it, so if I multiply capital and labor by T, it is equal to T times gamma times F K and L times raised to the power gamma. Okay, so this can be greater or smaller than T times the K and L. If okay, so the first case, if gamma is greater than one then this is greater than this so if gamma is less than one and bigger than zero then the second condition is satisfied for the first condition this is increasing return to scale and the second condition is decreasing return to scale so here we can see that the constant return to scale can be developed to ILS and DLS to satisfy different scenarios